if investors, institutional investors, get over the acceptance hump. They understand what crypto is. They understand how a blockchain works. They buy into this notion of tokenized economics. There's a whole other set of barriers to institutional ownership. Um, and we should talk about that. Custody is probably at the top of the list. Yeah, well, let's start with the fact that Bloomberg got over the fear of being in the crypto space. Like, that's a big deal, right? You guys are a, a, a mainstream, big, you know, giant financial market media company with a manager committee that probably isn't as young as, you know, as me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like most big management committees, you're older. And in general, older people have had a harder time understanding this, this shift, right? Even the idea of digital gold makes a lot more sense to my 24-year-old than it does to my 84-year-old dad. Uh, and so we're seeing institutions make, make a move. Having this index is important. I was thinking about other places that started index. The S&P 500 came out in 1962, and if you look at the price of stocks from 62 onwards, they kind of went straight up. Uh, Lehman had its first fixed income in index in 72, and then the Lehman AG, I think, was like 82. Uh, and if you look at what happened in the fixed income markets from the mid-70s straight up, it's literally been one direction. I was at Goldman Sachs in 1992 when Goldman launched the Goldman Sachs Commodities Index. Up until then, people speculated in commodities just like they speculate in crypto, but no institutions had bought commodities as part of their portfolio. Goldman came out and said, hey, this should be part of your institutional portfolio. It's uncorrelated. These are the reasons. If you look at commodity prices from 1992 to 2008, man, you wish you owned a lot. And so this index, maybe we're six months early, maybe we're two years early, but crypto will be an asset class. Uh, institutions will move into it. Custody is coming. I'm speaking to four or five major uh, traditional custody players that are all working on figuring out how they're going to get involved. There's been enough money made and enough, and enough research done and enough people moving into this industry that every institution, if there's been one surprise to me in the last eight months, it's when I go to the New York Stock Exchange or to Deutsche Bank or to Goldman Sachs. Their senior people know so much more about crypto than I thought they would. They are doing their work and they are getting ready to pull the trigger. Uh, and so we are going to see announced in the next three to six months, three to nine months, an institutional custody solution. Now, what's interesting is the custody, custody solutions today actually are probably fine, but they're run by companies like Zappo and BitGo and Kingdom Trust. And generally, if you're sitting at the state of Wisconsin and you're going through that form, are you going to risk your career on something that says Zappo? No, you actually want it to say, you know, State Street. And so, ironically, we're going to need kind of a step back to go forward. We're going to need trusted custodians to hold these keys. But I'm telling you that's coming, and I'd be shocked if you don't see it by year end. Whether it's State Street or Goldman Sachs. My or... own hunch is it's going to be some consortium, right? Because the consortium gets you close enough, and then the one firm isn't betting the, betting the ranch. Because these, these are bare instruments. Someone robs the bank, ooh, that would suck. Uh, but custody's only part of it. Does a, for these... This is why I strongly believe that this market, in fact, I'm going to go ahead and pull up the graph to the year chart, but I really do feel, oh man, hold on, let me adjust this. Wrong year, guys. I wish I wish the chart looked like that. I'll just do this from the crash. This is why I really feel, uh, we'll go down a little more. So like I said, I mean, you can see that the growth of crypto this part was just parabolic and then obviously we've kind of now flatlined but i see it breaking these highs of 850 816 billion dollars i really do feel like in previous uh videos i've made the prediction by the end of the year we would see bitcoin to 25,000 or sorry 20,000 i just shared a video if you want to go through my channel tom lee is predicting by the end of the year bitcoin to 25,000 and what this interview just basically stated is more than enough evidence that if we don't see a $25,000 Bitcoin, we most likely will see at least a $20,000 Bitcoin. And the sky's the limit, you know, and if you want to look at a more long-term picture, maybe a year from now instead of six months from now. So let's say a, uh, June 2019, 
I mean, we could even see a $50,000 Bitcoin. Now that's super optimistic. And like I said, um, you do want to be careful and uh, I wouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. Uh, please go through the rest of my channel before you <laughs> do any kind of investing and uh, obviously have a diversified portfolio. But um, if it dips again, I mean, I don't know if it will, but if it does, I will continue to buy uh, Bitcoin at 7,000, 8,000 is a great price. Um, I'm hoping to buy more Bitcoin at five or 6,000, even though it hasn't hit that. But long term, I easily see this asset class going to 20,000. And I wouldn't be shocked if in a year or two years from now, we see a $50,000 Bitcoin. But let me know your thoughts, what you think about the interview. And uh, I will talk to you guys soon.